So picture this. It's the morning of November 18th, 2025. Everything seems totally normal. But deep behind the scenes, a really critical piece of the internet's plumbing, a service that powers a massive chunk of the web, just starts to fail. And that set off a chain reaction that brought some of the biggest sites online crashing down. And that really brings us to the heart of the matter, right? This whole meltdown wasn't caused by a big name you'd recognize, like Google or Amazon. Nope. It came from a company that, honestly, most of us have never even heard of. One that just works silently in the background. And that's exactly what made its failure so, so catastrophic. All right, so let's get into how this whole thing kicked off. For the engineers at a company called Cloudflare, what started as a normal Tuesday morning was about to turn into an absolute crisis. Because, completely unseen by the rest of us, one of the pillars holding up the modern internet was starting to crack. So what is Cloudflare anyway? Well, think of it like a super fast, super secure middleman for the internet. When you try to go to a website, Cloudflare jumps in to shield it from attacks and make it load way faster for you. It's this essential but totally invisible layer that millions and millions of sites rely on. And because it's so essential, when it started to fail, the fallout was immediate, and it was everywhere. It was honestly like watching a set of giant digital dominoes just start to topple one right after the other. The first huge domino to go, ChatGPT. All of a sudden, millions of people who rely on that AI tool for their work, for school, you name it, they were just hit with error messages. For most people, this was the first really jarring sign that a major artery of the internet had just been severed. And it wasn't just AI. Pretty soon after, the entire global town square, X, what we used to call Twitter, just went dark. You know, when a platform that big goes down, you know it's not some tiny glitch. It's a sign of a much bigger systemic failure. The outage also slammed the brakes on productivity. The incredibly popular design tool Canva went completely offline. That means creative projects, business workflows for millions of users all over the world just stopped. The digital economy was literally grinding to a halt. Okay, now here's where it gets kind of funny, in a dark way. The irony here is just perfect. Down Detector, the one website people rush to when they want to check if other sites are down, it was a victim of the outage too. You couldn't even check if things were broken because the checker itself was broken. So people visiting sites like the betting platform Bet365 were hit with this message, which is frankly pretty alarming. It makes it sound like you're the problem, like you've been flagged as a security threat. But here's the thing, you weren't actually blocked. This was just a scary symptom of Cloudflare's own security systems failing and totally misfiring. And this chart, wow, this really shows you the scale of the panic in real time. Just look at that first bar. At 11.45 a.m., Down Detector was just flooded with over 4,500 outage reports. That's a tidal wave of people screaming, the internet is broken. You can see the number drops a bit an hour later as things flickered back on, but the crisis was nowhere near over. So, while the rest of the world was just seeing error messages, Cloudflare's engineers were in a full-blown digital war room, scrambling to figure out what on earth went wrong. Let's take a look at the timeline and see how this whole high-stakes investigation played out minute by agonizing minute. Okay, this timeline shows the absolute race against the clock. At 11.48 UTC, the investigation is officially on. Then, about 30 minutes later, you see a little glimmer of hope. Some services start coming back. But it was a false alarm. By 12.44, the problems were back with a vengeance. So they make a drastic move at 13.04, taking a service called Warp offline in London to try and stop the bleeding. And then, just five minutes later, bingo, the breakthrough. They finally identified the root cause of the whole mess. So once the problem was identified, the entire narrative shifts, right? It goes from crisis to resolution. The teams finally had a target, and the first real, stable signs of recovery started to pop up. And the very first piece of solid good news came out of London. That warp service, which is basically a tool that helps make individual internet connections faster and more secure, it was successfully turned back on. It was a small, pretty technical step, but it was an absolutely critical one. And Cloudflare themselves confirmed the progress with this official update. Now, it's really important to note, these services, Access and Warp, they're more on the technical backend side of things. The huge websites that most of us were trying to use were still down, but the foundation for the fix was finally in place. And that was the next big mission. 
The team then shifted all their focus to what they call application services, which in simple terms is the stuff that lets websites like X and Canva actually run and serve you content. The foundational fix was done, but the main event wasn't over yet. So as the internet slowly blinked back to life, it was time for everyone to kind of step back and ask the big question. What did we actually learn from all this chaos? And the answer, funny enough, lies in a really old, really wise saying. This right here is the number one takeaway. The internet has become incredibly centralized. So many massive, critical services all depended on this one single company, Cloudflare, to work. It was a massive single point of failure. When that one basket got dropped, all the eggs inside it broke at the exact same time. And this all leads us to a final, pretty unsettling question. The Cloudflare outage was a massive wake-up call, a stark reminder of just how interconnected and yet how incredibly fragile our digital world really is. It really makes you wonder, have we built this amazing global system on a foundation that's just too dependent on too few pillars to stay standing?